All right, let's learn some more rules. All right, these ones are, these ones are actually pretty simple to prove as well, but we're not going to take the time to prove them. First, we're going to start with the sum rule. And that just says that if I'm taking the derivative of any two functions, that's just going to be the derivative of the first function plus the derivative of the second function. The difference rule should not be very surprising. That says, if I look at the derivative of one function minus another function, well, anything that goes for plus basically goes for minus. I think that's pretty much always true, just like so. And constant multiple rule. And these, these ones, by the way, these follow directly from limit laws. If you look at a proof of this, it's just limit laws for summing and adding. Same with this third one, actually, too. The derivative of some constant times a function is that constant times the derivative. And then just to be very clear, f and g are functions. And c is some real constant. Although it's true for complex numbers, too, but... We're not going to worry about complex numbers so much for these functions anyway. All right, so let's use these. Let's get some uh, practice with these ones. Example two says differentiate. Part A, f of x equals 3x squared. Well, the derivative is the derivative of 3x squared. We can use the constant multiple rule that says if there's a constant times a function, the constant comes out in front. Constant multiple rule says zunk with that three. It's three times the derivative of just x squared. And now we can use the power rule. Power rule says bring that exponent down and subtract one from the exponent. And that's gonna give us six times x to the first power, or just six x. So notice that multiplying a function by three, what does that effect have on the, on the derivative? Well, for multiplying a function by three, the derivative is just getting multiplied by three as well. Multiplying a function by three, that's a vertical stretching. So we vertically stretch it, it vertically stretches the function values, but it's also vertically stretching the slope. There's another way of thinking about this. Let's do part B, g of x equals 2x to the fifth minus 3x plus 7. Let's use the power rule, constant multiple rule, the sum rule, and the difference rule. Let's, let's use all the rules and the constant rule. I think we're literally using every rule we've talked about. So it's going to be de the derivative of this whole thing. All right, we can use the sum rule, the difference rule. It's going to be the derivative of the first thing plus minus the derivative of the second thing plus the derivative of the third thing. Constant multiple rule says this 2 can come out into the front. We get 2 times the derivative of just x to the fifth. Second one is a line. What's the slope of a line? Well, in this line, the slope is 3. Another way of thinking about this is you can actually use the power rule. All right, this is 3 times x to the first power, first, first power. So if we use the power rule, bring the exponent down, subtract 1 from the exponent. What's x to the 0th? x to the 0th is just 1. Um, but I guess I should actually use the constant multiple rule first. 
minus 3 times the derivative of just x. There's a couple ways of doing the second one. Derivative of a constant function is always 0. So we get power rule here, bring down that 5. Subtract 1 from the exponent, 5 becomes 4. And for a variety of reasons, depending on how you want to look at it, we mentioned a couple of them, but this derivative is 1. So we get 10x to the 4th minus 3 as our derivative. And I'm going through these in a ton of steps, showing where every each individual thing comes from. But probably even by the end of this section, I'm going to go through this much more quickly. Okay. Um, and, and it's very normal to go through these things much more quickly. But at the beginning, I want to try to show every single step. And then you can always review this video in the future ones if, uh, if you do want to review it a little bit more and make sure to know where all the steps are. Last example of this video. Find an equation of the line tangent Two f of x equals two root x minus three x minus one at the point one comma negative two. So tangent line, we need the derivative because the slope of the function, the slope of the function is the slope of the tangent line, which is the derivative. So we need to find the derivative first. Whenever you see a square root, it's usually a good idea to rewrite this function. Now we want to find f prime, because if we can find the derivative, then we know the slope of the tangent line. And, and then we can just use point slope form. So f prime of x is equal to the derivative of this whole thing, 2x to the 1 half minus 3x minus 1. And again, we just use a bunch of our properties. Sum and difference rule. And then just go through it again. Constant multiple rule. These constants come out in front. Or you can just say the derivative of a line, the derivative of 3x is just 3 couple of ways of approaching it. But if you're really using all of these laws that we're talking about in 3.3, this is how you can do it step by step. And this last term that gets hidden by the webcam, thank you, October, is zero. Perfect. <laughs> Either way, we can use the power rule now. We're going to get one half x to the negative a half minus 3 times 1, or let's fit this in here. The derivative is the 2 and the 1 half cancel, just 1 over the square root of x, minus 3. And I said that this is the slope of the tangent line, but notice that this slope changes depending on what x is. We specifically want the slope of the tangent line at this x coordinate. So we really care about what is the derivative when x is equal to 1. So the slope of our tangent line is going to be negative 2. Coincidentally, that's also the y value, which is a little unfortunate. Slope of the tangent line, that's the derivative at that point. And now, all that's left to answer our question is put it in point slope form. y minus the y coordinate, so subtract the negative 2 is plus 2, equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate. And we'll graph this and see if it is correct. So here's the function. It's kind of a little weird. Starts off with like a kind of a square root shape, and then that linear term starts dominating. So it kind of kind of behaves like a line after that. 
And we said this tangent line should be y plus 2 equals negative 2 times x minus 1. And lo and behold, orange is tangent to blue at this point. That's exactly what we wanted to see. That's this video. Let me know if you have any questions.